This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. Well, it's that time of year. Everyone's got to jam pack their games into the next few months, leaving my wallet screaming at me to pull the plug and just stop buying games I'm simply not going to finish due to lack of time. It's always the way, isn't it? So before my backlog gets further bombarded with more games, I figured let's at least knock one off that pesky backlog first so I can feel good about myself. Let's play a game that caught my attention earlier in the year to the point that I actually picked the game up within a week or so of release and yet hadn't played any of it despite my my intrigue. Well that changes today. Today we're going to finally play and platinum Dredge. Now I'm sure there are a number of you out there thinking what the hell is Dredge? Well, put it simply, Dredge is a fishing game with a very sinister undertone and mystery. Something ain't right here in this world as you set out to catch some fish, earn some money, complete some quests, and learn more about what the hell is going on around here. Just make sure you do all of that during the day, that is. It's this eerie atmosphere mixed with the grim art style and simple game premise that really drew in my attention, but I must say, after finishing Dredge, what an experience it was. Personally, I didn't know much about Dredge going in outside of I'm gonna get some fishing done and the art style looks dope. But what I ended up getting was one of my favorite gaming experiences so far this year, and that's why I'd recommend going into this game as blind as you can as well. The more in the dark you are about Dredge before playing the game, the better, and hence why I recommend if this game has caught your interest immediately, go and play it, and then come back to the video. Not before you leave the video a like, comment below some more platinum suggestions, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, of course. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, what is Dredge's Platinum journey like? Well, according to PSM profiles, the game ranks at about a 3 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, can be done in a single playthrough, and should take around 30 hours to complete. So, a very achievable Platinum for everyone. But now that we know what to expect, let's jump in and grab Dredge's Platinum. I do have to reiterate, I had no clue what to expect going in, which also means I had no idea what I was doing in terms of going for the Platinum. I wanted to go in blind, and that meant trophy-wise, my approach was basically, let's just play and see what we get. I knew there were no missable trophies, I could get both endings of the game in one playthrough, and any trophies I'd missed along the way I could clean up afterwards. Let's just figure out what this game is all about and go from there was essentially my train of thought going in, which seemed to start off rather well as I grabbed two trophies within the first 10 minutes for hearing a mysterious foghorn echo in the night and completing the introduction quest. Dredge very quickly gets you up to speed in terms of its gameplay loop. Go out and catch fish, sell them for money, use the money to upgrade your boat and equipment so that you can catch more fish and progress further to the outside islands and further the story. Oh, and night is where the world goes to hell as rocks appear out of nowhere, sea creatures and ghost ships come to hunt you down, and the longer you're out the worse it gets, so just go to sleep. Unless you want to catch some of the gnarly mutated fish for even more money. It's a risk versus reward system that, I'll be honest, I just was too scared to risk it for a long time. Especially when your boat is so fragile in the beginning, your little lamp is practically useless in terms of your vision, and you have no defenses for these nightmares. I was okay with biding my time in that regard. So in the beginning I stayed very close to home, just fishing these spots dry, unlocking two more trophies for depleting 25 fishing spots, and tetrising our way to a fully stacked cargo bay to set myself up for the task of venturing out to the game's further islands. Why venture out that way though? Well that's where the Collector comes into play and the main story. The Collector needs you to find 5 special items around the map, for what reason? Well, nothing good. We know that by the time we find our first item in a key, which he takes and bestows us with a supernatural ability in haste. An ability that is essentially a nitro boost, but use it too much and your engines will be cooked, but you can't just use it over and over without it overheating, because it also causes you to grow mad, which in turn means those nightmares that occur at night can attack you during broad daylight. So again, useful ability to trek the open ocean at a greater speed, but you do risk your own sanity. Again, in the beginning I was using this ability willy-nilly, unlocking a trophy by complete accident for keeping our haste burn meter above 50% for 10 seconds. 
It was around this point where I'd worked up the courage to leave the safety of civilization and the warmth of the lighthouse to venture out across the seas to our next stopping point, Gale Cliffs, to find the music box. Each of these areas are not just about going to a set spot and fishing these items out. You do have to put in the work, which in this case is repairing a family relationship to unlock some explosives to blow open the rocks blocking our way. But being that this is a new environment, I got straight back to fishing, unlocking another trophy around this time for selling $2,500 worth of fish to the fishmonger and returning the music box for another ability, Manifest. An ability that allows you to teleport straight to the collector, which is a handy ability with no real downside other than needing to venture the open seas again, but during the day that's really quite a peaceful process. Regardless, two items down, three to go as we head out to Stella Basin, the home of this underwater sarlacc pit, needing to neutralize that to be able to reach the ring right in the middle. But first we gotta fish these new species, and it was here we unlocked our first trophy for upgrading our hull to tier 2. Buying fishing rods that combined increased our fishing speed to 200%, and catch 250 fish using our fishing rods before we put the old stun lock on Boba Fett's grave and use Manifest to teleport back to the Collector, unlocking another trophy. We hand over the ring, unlock another ability in Banish, and now we can feel more comfortable trekking the night as this ability wards off any nasty creatures trying to destroy your little boat to head on out to the swampy maze-like area of Twisted Strand. But not before upgrading our hull to Tier 3. The swamp is infested with these mind suckers, and to grab our next item in the necklace, we need to help this stranded pilot get rid of them. It was here in the swamp that I finally fully researched one of the four categories. You get these gears from completing quests to just being lucky and finding them around the world, and you need a lot to fully research each category. Hence why we're almost done with the main story and only just unlock the trophy for researching all fishing rods. But we take care of business, and you know the drill. We hand over the necklace, get the best ability in Atrophy that just pulls all the fish from a fishing spot and head to our last location, and the worst in the game, Devil's Spine. This fiery hellhole is where we need to grab the last item for the collector in the pocket watch, but this place is primed for damaging your ship with tight spaces and these fish that slow you down and set you up as bait for this big goofball. Thankfully the trophies were nice to us here as we finally spotted every category of fish through our spyglass, have our engine speed combined for over 75 knots, and installed a piece of equipment in every available slot before managing to grab the pocket watch from this crazed cultist and heading into the game's two endings. Now Dredge saves right before the game's ending, hence why you can grab both in one playthrough and also press on afterwards. So we knock out both endings back to back, and that's the main story content done for Dredge. 22 out of a possible 40 trophies with no guide, just playing the game. Not too shabby if I do say so myself, but we had some big tasks ahead of us in order to grab that platinum. We still needed to fully upgrade our ship's hull, complete all the side content and fish shrines, and the big one, discover all 138 different types of fish in this world, with most having one if not two or three different mutations you also need to find, as well as some other miscellaneous tasks. But hey, one step at a time right, and first off, to get us feeling good, we wanted to knock out some of those easier trophies we'd missed during the main story, which saw us discard 25 fish, use the atrophy ability on a fishing spot a long way away, sell a total of $1,500 worth of trinkets, which in turn gave us the funds to upgrade the hull to tier 4. It's from this point I wanted to start knocking off the remaining side quests, as I'd already completed a few along the way but still had work to do. So I made my way through the remaining side quests from catching rare fish to helping this terrified sailor deliver his package, that I lost at sea, but still counted, all the way to feeding these cultists different fish around the map. Doing this helped me unlock a few more trophies for having a light source with over 3000 lumens, researched all crab pots, and banished 10 threats at sea. 
It was around this point I'd planned on live streaming some Red Dead Redemption. Check us follow at twitch.tv slash mehebe. But I was balls deep into this journey at that point, so I decided I needed to keep playing Dredge. Very early on, I managed to finish my last side quest, as well as only needed to find and visit one dock that I'd missed, before the real grind had set in. I still had around 40 fish I needed to find, two more categories I needed to fully research, needed to find and complete all the fish shrines as well as catch 100 crabs and 100 fish in my nets, which I'd done maybe 10 of each if I was lucky up to that point. While I was pondering what to do first, I did unlock the trophies for luring three different types of fish to one spot with the mixed bait here, and fully researched all the fishing nets before deciding I was going to visit each area and find all the fish I was missing, along the way completing the fish shrines at that area. A lot of the early areas I'd basically finished, just needing a mutated fish here or there, which boy was a boring process, as with the atrophy ability you're guaranteed to get a mutated fish, but you have to wait or sleep for hours to get another chance to use it, and same with the crabs. Put the pot down, hope what you need comes along within 1-3 to three in game days, Oh, and I had to abandon my quality fishing rods to fit the net on my ship to catch 5 or so fish a day. So it was a bit of a tedious process. Not long and tedious, I was still having a blast through these areas, but it's very basic. Use your telescope to find the missing fish, go over there and use your ability, head back to sleep, rinse and repeat, and that's basically what I did for the remainder of the game. This helped me finish all the areas in the game, unlocking the trophy for solving all the fish shrine puzzles as well as researching all the engines. Before we got to the hard part of discovering all fish, going into the open ocean and finding these suckers. Mind you, I still need to catch a lot more crabs and fish in the nets, but I didn't have many fish left to discover. They were just difficult fish to find. At this point, I only needed to find 8 more fish. I was 13 hours into this journey and I thought, I'm gonna smash this out. How hard can it be to find 8 more fish? I've already found 130. I was wrapping this platinum up in 10 minutes I thought. How wrong I was. It didn't take long to catch 2 fish, but the other 6 were all between the sun and moon fish, which I simply hadn't even seen up to this point and had no idea where to start looking. Thankfully that mindless sailing up and down the open ocean did pay off as I caught my 100th crab and my 150th fish using nets, but still, that literally only left these damn fish standing between myself and glory. I searched up the whole map, I googled where they might be, looked for them day and night, but to no avail until this happened. Oh, you're joking. Now let me explain that reaction, because I should have been hyped, right? That was the last of the standard fish, you know where these suckers are now. Well yes, but what I didn't know is if you haven't discovered a fish yet, and used the atrophy ability on the spot, it doesn't give you any mutations, and since it took me hours to find this fishing spot, I was rightfully worried I'd be stuck out at sea for the foreseeable future. I should clarify, the sunfish I wasn't as worried about at this point, despite being quite scarce too, but the moon fish being true to its name was only available at night, and that means it's so much harder to find them with lack of sight. I was patrolling these same spots over and over and over again for a solid hour, which is why when I finally found it again, this was the only just reaction. I feel like... Oh, I just saw it. Where the f*** was it? No. Okay. Now I've lost it. Shit. I can't see! Okay. Okay, we need one more. We need to find that sunfish. Which means I don't have to f*** around at night. One more sunfish to go and this platinum was mine, and as I said before, that isn't really all that bad. Still a bit of an endangered fish as it were, but with the day means more line of sight, and just like that I'd found my last mutated fish, unlocked Dredge's platinum, and our time with the game was over. <gasps> We're about to get it! We're gonna get the platinum! <laughs> get here you stupid fish! <laughs> I've been searching for f***ing ages! Yes! <laughs> and... Bing. 
from the depths. Holy sh! So after 14 hours in total, 16 hours better than the guide. What the hell was that estimate? What did I think of Dredge's Platinum and the game in general? Dredge was one of my favorite gaming experiences this year. When I say this game captivated me, it doesn't even begin to describe it. I was on the hook from the very beginning and just had so much fun from the first hour to the last. The story is engrossing, the gameplay loop is simple to follow but enthralling nonetheless, the atmosphere, art style, it's all fantastic and it just made for an experience I cannot recommend enough. In terms of the Platinum, it's all very natural, even the elements that are more time consuming. You want to explore every inch of this world, find as many fish as you can to earn more money, figure out the story, upgrade your vessel and equipment. Yes, I was fluffing around at the end looking for a few fish and catching some fish in ways that I didn't personally utilize a lot, but as long as you know to keep an eye on that before you have nothing else to do, then really this is 14 hours of pure joy, maybe 13 depending on your luck with certain fish. If you haven't played Dredge, seriously go and do that, and while you're at it, get that Platinum or all achievements because it's not only been one of my favorite games of 2023, but one of my favorite Platinums as well. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Bit of a random game today, but I just had to finally play Dredge and I'm glad I did. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more Platinum suggestions. Thank you to all my channel members for that extra level of support and special thanks to those in the Bear Club, GNT Puppy, Jackie White and Nugget. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mayor Hair Bear. Join the Discord server to have a chat. Go and chuck me a follow on Twitch if you want to see some of these Platinum journeys live. And I'll catch you all in the next video.